hello everyone again and welcome to my channel in here we're going to be looking at symmetry and how symmetry is actually important in various organic or i would say inorganic compounds and now you will also notice that symmetry is actually familiar everywhere in natural or living organisms let's take for an example we as human beings that for example this is me anyways just have to make fun of myself for now and here this is my face and my face actually has a line of symmetry which is actually a plane in here and the plane shows that there is a mirror image here going from the left side of my face to the right side of my face where we have my nose and my mouth in here so this is kind of interesting and even our brain do physiologically do have a plane of symmetry where we have the left hemisphere to that of the right hemisphere and on the other side if you look at it in terms of the psychology behind it is quite different in a way because we do have the left lobe having a different characteristics in terms of exhibitions of what we actually do versus that of our right lobe but anyways that is just a little bit of the biology let's go into more chemistry so that is kind of an example of symmetry in our body mostly in our face but on the other side of the eye let's translate that into various compounds and look at it more in details what chemists actually do when they are actually differentiating various compounds based on the symmetry look now one important thing is that we do use symmetry elements and symmetry elements are quite important because they kind of enable us to actually differentiate compounds not only based on their mirror planes but also looking at the axis of rotation and lastly we also look at the inversion in here so all these three actually helps us to actually differentiate or categorize various compounds and we'll go to dive more in terms of what each of them represents not in this video but we're going to pick one of it which is the axis of rotation now the axis of rotations focuses more on symmetry operation which looks at the rotation and there are various interesting angles that we're going to look at and also going to actually categorize in here so firstly we have this particular sticker note in here which shows us some interesting rotation angles and their corresponding symmetry operation. Now, where did these symmetry operation rotations come from? That is an interesting question that we're going to answer in here, and that comes down to this particular formula, which is a rotation degree where we have 360 degrees divided by n, which gives us our angle. And this angle in here is actually the rotation angle in here. So if I put the rotation angle in here, what that gives me is my end value and my end value tells me my rotation operation which is the CN now CN where N in this case equals to 6 then I have 60 degree rotation on a specific compound now some people will be wondering what is an example of this particular case in here let's look at the staggered form of ethane where we're going to look at it based on our numeral projection we have this over here and we have this particular hydrogens here and on the other side we have the other one over here so in this particular case the angle made between this particular one and this guy over there is actually 60 degrees so if I make a 60 degree rotation with this relative to this particular carbon or I would say hydrogen in this case let's just put it in here if I make a rotation of 60 degrees then I actually have a C6 symmetry operation in here but then if you're looking at other things like for example going from 60 degrees to 120 an example of this is actually this particular compound in here where we have a hydrogen and we have chlorines in here connected to this particular carbon so if I just use this pen and this shows me my axis of rotation if I rotate this all the way to this particular position and make a 120 degrees rotation this tells me that hey if I put this into this particular formula I get 
a3 so it means that it is a c3 rotation and this is the three, three c3 rotation that is actually applied in here now if we look at another compound in here which is this one that is present in here let me change it to this position of our functional groups where we have two same functional groups and we have two same functional groups but they are actually this and that are actually different so if i put this and i have this actually position in here or I position it this way and I put my C2 rotation and I make 180 degree turn I arrive at the same particular compound so it means that it is indistinguishable if I'm making my rotations in here my symmetry operation in here is the C2 which is what I have right here for 180 degrees so that's about it in terms of this vascular one now in terms of E why am I calling this E the reason why it is E is because if I'm applying a specific operation and or a rotation operation where I realize is that hey as I'm making all my angles from 60 all the way to 359 degrees I don't get the original or I don't get the same one as the original so what I end up is at the end of my rotation which is 360 degrees which is a full circle I finally get what I want initially and that is that means that oh I'm actually getting what I have before even though I make all my angles at the end of the day let's say for an example we are on this particular object which is an eraser if I make a rotation in here all the way starting from zero and I make everything all the way this is 180 and I make my rotation back to 360 degree I arrive at the same particular shape as I had before so in this particular case it is identity and this identity shows me that hey as I'm trying to make this rotation there's no way I can get to the original form or less I actually make a full 360 degree turn to get to my original structure or compound in here the same thing which actually applies in here or i think applies in this particular case if i make 360 degrees turn i arrive at the same particular shape however if you're looking at it in this particular case if i make 180 degrees i arrive at the original part that i had before because if you look at here and look at there it's actually aligned in the same way where this is pointing up and if I make that 180 degree this points up and this still points down so this on this particular point here has a C2 rotation but if I look at it based on this or based on that I actually have oh sorry or based on that I actually make a E which is identity so that's about it for this particular point. Now we're going to look at some other interesting things that we have to take into account also as well. There are some other rotations that are actually relating to our C2 axis that is perpendicular to our principal axis of rotation. So what is our principal axis of rotation? Principal axis of rotation is when you have the maximum rotation that is actually present in a molecule so in this particular case if we have this particular compound which is an ethane in here what I see is that I have a principal axis of rotation in here which is if you look at it based on this this is a C3 rotation or on the other side this is a C6 this is eclipse and this is staggered if we want to choose our eclipse, then we have our eclipse based on this particular point in here. So our eclipse shows that I have a C3 based on the position in here. I have a C3 rotation. So if I'm going this way, this way, the same thing over and over again. So this is a C3 point actually between this carbon carbon, uh, passing through this carbon carbon bond in here. So in this particular case, if I want to make a particular C2 axis that is actually perpendicular to our principal axis. In this particular case, our C2 axis that is perpendicular to our principal axis is actually in here. So if I have a C2 axis in here, as shown in this particular diagram here, 
So in this particular case, I will C2 that is perpendicular to our C3, which is actually this. This is our C3. This is our C2 axis in here. It's perpendicular to our C3 principal axis that is over here. So we actually name this our C2 prime because this is actually going through a bond. However, if we have a different case where it is going between two bonds, then that is called a C2 prime. And an example of that is a staggered form where we have this particular axis actually going through uh, between bonds. So in this particular case, we have a C2 prime that's actually present in staggered, but it is not present in eclipse. However, eclipse has C2 prime that is actually present in it, but not present in a staggered form. So that's about it for this particular um, understanding of principal axis of rotations and everything right here. Quite a long video. Our next video, we're going to be talking about inversion center and all this. And thanks for following me through this trail. I appreciate it. Hit the comment down below. Let me hear your thoughts. Hit the like, share, and subscribe. And be smart. Bye.